What's going on everyone? This is not the video that I was planning, but here we are. Last night I was doing some gaming and my keyboard started acting up on me. My desk set up, my hands are a little weird, so I thought maybe I was hitting two keys at once, you know, a little fat finger issue. Uh, but turns out, it wasn't me. So whenever I was pressing W, E was also going through, and half the time when I was pressing two or three, the other key would go through simultaneously. Again, at the beginning, I thought maybe I was just being careless, but then I actually tested it, and it turns out it wasn't me, it was the keyboard. Now I'm lucky I have a fairly nice gaming keyboard. Uh, it's a Razer, and I'd rather not go spend another 80 or 100 bucks on it, so today we're actually gonna take a crack at fixing it. Here is a dramatic reenactment of what I am talking about. As you can see, my thumb is nowhere near the E key, and yet every time, almost every time, I hit W, it pops up. Big problem when it comes to gaming. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all the screws off of the back of the keyboard here. Now, you have a lot of Phillips screws in different locations. You have them under the pads, which are here, 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 and here. And then you also have them underneath these here. All right, so these cover one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have nine of these. It's an adhesive plate that covers the screw hole. And all I did was take the flat head of my screwdriver and use it to just pry those up. You can do the same with the feet, but just be careful, protect the adhesive, because we need to put those back down. You don't need to see me do that in time lapse, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here, take care of that, and we'll start it back up. Open sesame. You got this. You got it. Ah, there we go. All right, so mechanically speaking, and I'm not a mechanic, so take this with a grain of salt, especially over here in our W area. That, look at that, that is kind of weird. But anyway, nothing seems to be wrong here with the key caps. All right, so everything that we're looking for as far as the problem has got to be down here. So there's a couple different layers here. First, we are going to take this off. Now this right here, this little membrane, makes contact down here whenever you make a keystroke. So we're just going to peel this right away, like so. Now that we have it exposed, it's time to clean it. I have some multi-purpose spray that I was going to use on here, but I was afraid Given the nature of these light components, even though it said it's plastic safe, I decided not to, and instead, we're going with rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. So, I'm not sure how detailed it's going to be in the video, but if we come down three and over three, just below this piece here, this contact is our W contact, all right? So I'm going to clean this whole area. I'm not gonna clean the whole thing because I'm not having problems over here. I'm just gonna clean the W key and around the W key on the front, the back, and on the board behind it because, again, I'm not entirely, I think the issue's coming from right here, but I'm gonna clean all of that surface area anyway. So again, this is just some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. I recommend being careful because you don't want anything that's gonna leave fuzz or lint across this area when you're done. So make sure you don't have any particles coming off the Q-tip 
And if you do use a rag or anything like that, make sure you're not using something that will leave any fibers behind. Just going to dab lightly. And then just as an added measure, All right, now that we have all of our contacts cleaned, we're gonna put this back on. I've been careful to leave this surface here off of the counter because I don't want any contaminants in there and I did use a little compressed air to blow out the components. So we wanna make sure that this lays directly where we need to and we get all of these little contacts back because that's where our keys are gonna land. All right, everyone, so the camera has been off for a little while. Uh, obviously, you didn't see that uh, because after we just did what we did, I went over to test it. And unfortunately, when I was striking the W key, which again is right over here, um, the W E was popping up again. And honestly, I was a little distraught because one, I just wasted all this time filming something that didn't work. And two, it looked like I was gonna have to buy a new keyboard. So I decided to get a little more um, intensive and this is what I did while the camera was off. So this was again, very gently removed. And what I did was, if you notice on screen, if you don't see the reflection of my head and hands here, um, every contact has a, I'm sure people know the technical terms out there, I do not, essentially a thread that runs down to these sections down at the base. So this whole quarter, or so of the keyboard runs to this connection down here. So I was looking at the individual thread, I lost it in the melee down here in the base, but then I thought, you know what, what happens when we get into here? So I have a little uh, non iFixit toolkit over here that has one of these little guitar pick looking things. And I very carefully, very gently went over here because I don't know if I can pull this off. Let me try to zoom this in a little bit. So you can see this here. Those are the lines that I talked about here. So the white and black sections here, the white is solid. The black is actually a little flap. So if you are careful and gentle, you can actually lift that up like so. I don't know if my hand was blocking that whole process, but as you can see, barely there. So then what I did was I took this and I very gently lifted and separated that out, all right? Then what I did was I took a Q-tip with the rubbing alcohol, ran across both sides because I'm not too sure where the contacts are, um, and then I used that T-shirt to gently dry and then the compressed air to blow it out. I don't know if I've said this yet, but whatever you do, you do at your own risk, <laughs> okay? If you do this and you screw it up, don't blame me because at this point I'm just winging it. But anyway, once I did that, I tested it again and it worked. Give me just a second, I'm gonna show that to you. But here, this, we bend it back slightly. This is, I don't recommend creasing it, but this has a lot of give to it, okay? It's very malleable. So this, you wanna bend slightly back down here so you can get back into here like so. Make sure it's nice and flat, and then that little door closes right there. I don't even have everything back together yet. I wanted you to see this right away, right here, look. W, W, W. Again, and again, and again. The E key that we saw popping up at the very beginning is not happening. So that's it, we did it. Oh, I am so happy that worked. Taking the time to do that saved so much money uh, with a gaming keyboard like that, and it worked. You saw it right there. Uh, I'm not gonna take the time to show you guys how to put it back together. It's, you know, 15-ish screws. Just, you know, watch the video in reverse if you need to. But, whew, that second cleaning down there on those threads at the very bottom, that did the trick. So, 
yes. Um, if you do try this, please be very careful. Um, and if it doesn't work, don't come to me. That's the first time I've ever done that. Keyboards are not something that I mess with. That was, and I, so I also don't know if that's gonna work on every type of keyboard. I'm not even sure if they're set up the same. Uh, that worked for this one in particular, which, hold that thought, that keyboard is this one right here. So if you're having the same problem, I really hope something like this works for you. Um, and if it doesn't, I hope you can find a cheap replacement keyboard. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Bye.